What's going on guys? I hope everyone is having a great day and I see that we have got a TV spot for Halloween Ends. I don't know if it was presented earlier today or if it came out if it got leaked last night. I know it got leaked, which that doesn't shock me in the slightest. Um well, I don't know, man. There's some cool stuff that I saw that doesn't necessarily mean that the movie is going to be good. In fact, I'm very scared to see where this is going to go as a Halloween fan. But this TV spot, to me personally, throws up some red flags that I want to address. And I've heard it all about this Corey Cunningham guy. Now, who the hell is this guy? From my understanding, though, he, from the, you know, as far as the information that I was given... He is Allison's new boyfriend, and he could be involved with a violent crime involving the death of a child. But they don't really tell you that, and they don't tell you if Corey goes crazy and dresses up as Michael and starts killing people and has some sort of weird obsession with Michael, which is okay with me if they don't want to tell us this and they just want to leave it to when we go watch, when we go and see the film. You don't want, I understand they don't want to spoil the plot. I get that. But that, to me, if this turns out to be true, kind of comes off like Arnie in the movie Christine, where he obsesses over the car and goes on a complete downward spiral. And Christine's one of my favorite horror movies. I love that movie. And weirdly enough, Arnie's last name is also Cunningham. So when they said that this is going to be very Christine-like, Christine-esque. Could they have meant that this movie has a very Christine-esque plot? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm cool with that either for a Halloween film. Like I said last time, I think it's a bit late as well to be throwing in a new antagonist. And I have also heard people say that... <laughs> you're not going to believe this. That Corey is possessed by Michael. And the Myers fan addressed the Myers fan 25 addressed this in his new video. The rumor is going around that Michael possesses Corey Cunningham and turns him into evil. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me in this timeline because Michael is supposed to be a man, a human. I'm not saying this is true. This is just rumors. But what baffles me is that I have seen these fanboys. I have seen these people in Facebook groups, YouTube videos, say that this is good. And they can't wait for this, if it's true. And that they're so happy to have this introduce something new and fresh to the Halloween franchise. But what's funny to me about this is that these are the same people who hate Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers, and say that the Cult of Thorn is ridiculous and absurd. Well, what makes the Cult of Thorn more ridiculous than this? This is even more ridiculous, if it's true, because Michael is supposed to be a human in this new story, where in the old storyline, Michael was, he wasn't established as supernatural, but he became supernatural. He became a generic horror villain in the original storyline. I hope to God that that's not what happens. Because if that's the case, I'm not going to enjoy this movie. And as far as the TV spot goes, I don't know. Like I said, there was some cool stuff. I liked how Michael's mask was lit. I thought that looked pretty cool. But I also noticed some of the same cringy, shitty dialogue that we've gotten in the last two films. In this new series. Laurie Strode. States. And I quote. It's time. To put the boogeyman to bed. It's time. To put the boogeyman to bed. Now I want you to let that sink in for a second. And. What I want you. The viewer. To do. Is I want you to no, I want you to think about this. I want you to notice something. Okay. I want you to notice how that wh what's off about this. Okay. If you haven't yet figured this out, I'm going to tell you. People don't 
talk this way in real life. I don't know anyone. There is not one person that I know who speaks in the Shakespearean dialect where everything is all grandiose and prim and proper. This has been going on for the entire God Forsaken trilogy. Where in 2018 you have Allison referring to her grandma as grandmother and, t and calls her grandmother. Did you talk to grandmother today? Where's grandmother? Is grandmother coming to dinner? Grandmother, where are you, grandmother? Nobody I know refers to their grandmother as grandmother. Unless it's... Unless the conversation is... Say, oh, the, she's my grandmother, my grandma. But I don't even know most people that say grandmother anymore. And we get the same crappy dialogue in Halloween Kills. Where she's like, you guys should, uh, Lori goes, you you guys should not have to suffer for the darkness that I've created. And I remember just sitting and watching that, just slumped down in my chair. People don't talk that way. People don't. Oh, that's not how people communicate in real life. Do these people not understand how people speak to each other in real life? Lori could have just said, we have to kill it. And I use the word it because that's how Dr. Loomis, the true heart and soul of Halloween, the Halloween franchise, would have phrased it. And maybe it wouldn't be right for Lori necessarily to phrase it like that, but she could have at least said, uh, I don't know, kill this son of a bitch or something. Something normal, something simple. Like, seriously, put the boogeyman to bed. Like, what are you going to give him a nice warm bottle of formula as well and read him green eggs and ham and sing him twinkle twinkle little star? The dialogue has always been an issue for me since the 2018 movie. And the dialogue in the 78 film, while not a, you know, not a, not a groundbreaking piece of script writing that f movie feels real to me when the girls when the three girls on the walk home from school talk to each other they sound like real girls talking to each other when dr loomis and bracket talk to each other that feels organic it feels real and so far as it looks we're going to be getting more of the same from the last two films it seems like they've just not realized what they've done wrong, and they're making absolutely no effort to correct it so far. Now, we could watch the movie, and it could be a whole other ball game. And I'm in my right mind to make this assumption and be worried about this. We've had two films of this, so yes, I'm rightfully worried. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope this ends up being one of the best Halloween sequels. Do I doubt it? Yeah. And I've, I've even been asked as well. Do I think if Halloween ends as good, could it change how I feel about 2018 and kills? And it it's possible, but it's not probable that'll happen. I severely doubt. I'm about 99.9% .9 sure that that won't happen. It's possible. I could Halloween ends could be great and it could make me rethink things in 2018 and kills. But I seriously doubt that that's going to happen. I have to leave it open to the possibility, but I don't really see that happening with what, I'm, what I've seen so far. So, I don't know, guys. I hope I'm wrong. Like I said, this movie ha looks like it has some cool stuff in it, but so did 2018 and Kills. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Are you guys impressed with what you've seen so far, or... or or are you the opposite and not sold on it? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'm out. Peace.